right. Hi, guys. I don't have, I actually haven't let anybody in yet. Give me a moment. I'm just going to pull up the original place where we're broadcasting live. Hi, my frameworks group. And no, oh, don't need that. And as long as I have the live feed is happening, which we are, I don't see yet, but um, got it. Ah, okay, that should do it. <laughs> okay, view, let everybody in. All right. Hey guys, what's going on? Mayor, Al, and Matt. What's going on, guys? How was your week? It was good. It was a good week. Worked. This is my day off, so. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. You have Fridays off now. That's cool. Friday, Saturday. Yeah, so that's nice. Did a, 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 a coaching with Gar, uh, Garnet this, this morning, so that was fun. Oh, cool. Okay. You can work on a character stuff with him or. Yeah, we delved into that a little bit. Um, he gave me some ideas and, you know, I, it's going to be a process. It was very interesting um, what he was telling me. Like, so this is going to be one of those things that it's going to be the longer drawn out course of action, just because you have to develop these guys and, and um, you know, have a background on them and stuff and, and make them their own person. So that's going to be my homework. And, um, but it was, it was lots of fun uh, doing some, some stuff with him. I, it, I came away there terrified. Let's just say I came away there terrified. Cause I'm like the whole new level of fear is now I'm at regarding <laughs> this. Well, hopefully, hopefully it's an excitable fear. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a good fear. I mean, it's yeah. a fear that it it was definitely going to happen, but you know, it was just sort of like, okay, this is, this is another level of, of expertise and skills. So, yeah. all right, right on. Well, that's cool. Yeah, no, it's, a, I've never delved into the, um, anything that's been character voices. So you're, you're already a step ahead of me in that realm. It's like, I've actually, Garnet and I have always talked about, like he would take my marketing class and I would take his character class and we would just kind of like switch, like trade off, you know, basically. Sure. But um, we just haven't, we haven't planned it yet, but that's kind of what we had talked about in the past. So, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I'm like, I have no idea. My biggest thing is I, I just want to be able to do the voice of a little boy. Because the most, you most have women a great boy voice. What's that? You would have a great little boy voice. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know because I don't actually really know how to do it. So, like, I need that instruction in order to even be able to manipulate it. Like, I if I watched watched us like enough women doing it, I could probably like figure out where the placement is. Uh huh. But I also I don't know. I just feel weird. Watch the Simpsons. You know. What's that? The Simpsons. Yeah, but that's really better. high though. Like she's up here, you know, like all the way up here. But like a, a lot of the boy voices that I that I follow, like Lee, Lisa Biggs, do you know Lisa mm -hmm. Biggs? Um, she she's another, she's in the the voiceover realm. She's another coach, but also voice actor. But she's gonna have she has a very high voice. She teaches that kind of thing, except her boy voice is actually lower than her natural voice. So oh. she goes down here and like kind of like has almost like this kind of like, you know, like a, like a hoarseness to it. But huh. it's still it's really funny. But when she does it, it's great. It's just and and when I hear other women doing it and watch them, that's usually they're like it's like coming from like the back of your throat. I don't really know. But I, that's why I want to talk to Garnet about it is like, it would be kind of fun to just be able to pull that out of my back pocket and like pull it out of parties or whatever. Cause they're like, Hey, do a voice. And I never can do it because I'm just like, I just, I'm sorry, guys. I just do commercials. I'm sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> like I don't do the party trick of like a voice actor where I can just break out into Bart Simpson or 
or anything else that people know. So, um, you know, or do any kind of tricks or anything with my voice. It's just like, well, it's just, just this, this is what you get, <laughs> whatever, yeah. what you hear is what you get. But, um, you know, but at the same time, it would be kind of fun to just break it out once in a while. Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. Anyway. So Isaac, hi. Ellen hi Trish. Here. How's everybody doing? Good. You can you guys can open your, I was going to say, leave your mics open if you want to when, when, the, uh, when the room is small enough like this, we can always kind of have it open unless you guys have like background noise specifically, but you can like Al, you can, you can open your mic if you want to just pop in once in a while, unless you're doing stuff, it's totally fine. No, I just usually have it muted because if the dog barks, everyone would be dead. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I think we can handle a dog barking. Once yeah. in a while, but, um, hey, Mary. Hi, Jim. What's going hey. on? Uh, just go ahead. How was your week? Very good. How was yours? Good. Good. Nothing, nothing really out of the ordinary. So, yeah, but I me can't either. Really complain. Yeah, me <laughs> nothing either. to complain I'm about. Nothing to yeah. celebrate, but nothing to complain about. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh. That's cool. Good. Well, um, and and uh, how did you? Oh no, you're still waiting for your demo, Jim. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 And see. Yeah. The the waiting game is a little frustrating. But if you're but if you're using that time to start to use the marketing stuff, um then we, you know, you could definitely take advantage of that time. I have to get that video done. Oh my gosh. It just keeps the, like the weeks just keep flying by and I'm like, I have to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, I just, I blink like from the moment I get up to <clears throat> the moment that I like, it's just to the point where I'm like, like completely like spent from work. It's just like sometimes every 15 minutes is like, I, I have, you know, I don't have a whole lot of time to like sit down, you know, it's like, I, I, I really have to just put aside the time. It's like, the thing is that marketing video, it's, you know, it's kind of, um, it's a lot of information. I may wind up splitting it up into different, into like separate pieces, but recording yeah. it is just, you know, it's just a matter of sitting down and doing it you know, but it's, it's, you know, probably there, that, that is going to be at least, at least an hour long, that right. video, but probably longer. Yeah. Now, Trish, you had uh, mentioned to me once um, that you had cons considered taping that and like having, I mean, I know you're going to tape it. I mean, like having a, a class, like having a group there with you when you taped it. I did. And the more I thought about it, the more my ADHD brain goes back and forth on all of the different options with that. And like, okay, trying to picture that and how sure. am I going to be more distracted if I have people watching me or am I going to feel no, cause I'm not used to presenting to a group. Maybe I am like, maybe it will be better for me to just write all the bullet points down and go through everything and just be able to narrate and just record it on my own, you know? Cause I, I did, I, I considered that about like, oh, hey, like if you guys wanna, anybody that's eligible for that information can sit in on like a class if I kind of like scheduled it that way. But I don't know if I really wanna do that. Cause then I'm also, the thing is, is if I do that on Zoom, um, I mean, yeah, no, there's no group that would be, there's no group that that's exclusive, that that information would be like, if I were to go live in a group and do it that way, um, I just don't want a bunch of other people on the actual recording. Like if it's like something like this, cause it's going to be like a zoom call. Right. right so sure. it's not going to be me pointing my phone at myself. It's going to be like a, like a thing. Cause I have to share my screen and all that. And I don't really want anybody else on the actual recording either. So I, I kind of kind of keep kept going back and forth. I know I thought it was like a kind of a great idea at first. And then the more I thought about it, I'm like, I'm not sure if I want that distraction of like people hopping on and hopping off. Cause you know, it's like, then you have yeah. people like, 
and you know, like I know everybody would be like respectful or whatever, like and make sure that they didn't unmute their mic or anything like that. But at the same time, I'm like, is it really necessary? Mm -hmm. Plus, because it's not that um, environment that I'm used to presenting it anyway. It's usually just a one on one session. So I think I'm just going to have to just suck it up and, you know, like kind of just do it myself. Um, you know, it's just a matter of, like I said, kind of getting here. And I'm just going to hit record. Like you can still record a Zoom even when you're not on with someone. You can just record it. That's, you know, you can use it as a recorder. So, and then I could share my screen and then, you know, but um, I know it's going to be valuable. It's just like, so I'm, I'm really trying to maybe get some time aside for this, um, like this weekend to be able to maybe just spend an hour going through that. And then the maybe different, you know, like I'll be able to add to it, you know, as I add kind of the sections, because I not only talk about my, um, what do you want to call it? Like my uh, process of getting work and everything that I use to do it. Um, but I also uh, have like other things that I can recommend, like the actual, like everything's kind of in sections, right? So there's the actual process of what I use to actually find the work, all the details of how I search for it, what keywords I use, all of that is all kind of a process in itself. And then I have things that I do that are uh, in a different category, like in-person networking events and in-person, you know, what to do at a networking event and how to, you know, how to prepare for them or how to make the most out of them, you know, um, and, you know, tips and things that I've used over the years when I'm actually at an in-person networking event. You know, and then there's material, what I call material marketing, postcards and, you know, business cards, like actual, like tangible mail marketing kind of thing. Instead of email marketing, you have actual physical mail marketing or, you know, what to like, what I recommend getting or not getting, you know, because when it, a lot, a lot of people are like, oh, I have to get business cards. Don't go crazy with the business cards because you don't really need. The, I bought I bought a thousand business cards in two thousand eight, and I still have half of them. <laughs> so you know, it's like don't go nuts. You know, Chris, with the do yeah. you have does it have to be a video? I mean, can you just do an audio of this of the program? Um, no, because I need I share my screen. There's some uh, really specific ways that I use certain websites. Right. Um, I think it's really helpful. I think it'll be, I mean, I could, I could just explain it, but that it wouldn't be very effective. It okay. would definitely help for anybody that's going to be using that information for anybody to be able to play the video. If you can have a dual monitor set up mm -hmm. and play the video on one screen and have it open on your own, uh, on, you know, on an, on the other screen and have them next to each other. That's the best way to go. That's great for editing too. Those of you that are still kind of getting used to editing and stuff, having, you know, a tutorial of your DAW, whatever you're using, your recording, um, uh, software, you know, pull that up on a tutorial of it from YouTube and have that open when you have your own program open on a separate monitor and play play the video and then do the same thing on the on your own on your own system and it'll start to kind of reinforce some of those things you know right. so um but uh, but yeah so then i have that and i have like yeah oh and then i have like content i talk a little bit about content marketing which is online you know just short form video which i'm not a total expert at but at the same time i can probably i can make some recommendations on what i do and what tools mm -hmm. i'm gonna i'm i'm going to be using um i actually have uh one in particular that i really want to start using um and this is also it, remember guys like this is like i have the combination of my voiceover business and also my coaching stuff. So I, I try to kind of like go back and forth between them as like my, you know, reminding people that I do voiceovers also, um, mm -hmm. you know, and not just talking from a coach's perspective, but at the same time, it's, you know, it, it's, uh, 
it, it just has to be done in kind of like a combination of places, you know? So I do see a lot of other coaches that also have their own voiceover careers. I see a comment, them doing a combination with content. They're, they're doing a mix of both for their own stuff and for their coaching stuff. So, you know, under the same account. So I think I'll still be, I, you know, I'll be fine with that. It's just a matter of like balancing the content. Um, but I've been looking to a, into a, um, a tool called repurpose.io, which apparently is like a game changer. Um, it's posting a video from TikTok and then it automatically pulls it, removes the watermark from TikTok and sends it to, like you can set it up to send it to like five, six, seven other places. So you guys, you guys may, might be seeing me in a lot more places soon if it works. If nice. it's something that I, that I stick with, it, it, let, let me know if it's too much because, <laughs> uh, you know, you that could that also be bad. Like we would ever say that to you. <laughs> well, Trish, too much. Mm -mm. Yeah, too much. I see you everywhere. It's not. Oh my God. Sick of your face. <laughs> Sick of your face. Because, you know, I want to, I have a lot of clips and I have a lot of video of me kind of like doing this kind of a thing, except I'm in the booth and I'm doing like a QA and a um, or something like that. So I kind of want to. a Q&A in a while. What's that? Oh yeah, yeah I know. Well, that was the core. I know I didn't do one pretty much all summer because I was like hosting that summer course, and that really took a ah, lot of my time. It right, was, right, that right. was a lot of work, um, yeah. which I didn't mind doing. I had a blast doing it, and we got a lot of great students from it. Honestly, I think we had seven signups, seven new people come on board to the great. to the Big Kahuna basically to start working with us. So it was really cool, um, and. You know, I, but, uh, but yeah, at the same time, it was more work than I kind of expected it to be because it was only twice a week and it was all stuff that I knew, except mm -hmm. it was like the slides and the presentations and try to like coordinate everybody to make sure that, you know, everything, but it was, it was definitely, it, but it was a great learning experience. I just knew I learned what I was capable of and what I was like kind of starting to start to lose track of things. So, you know, I'm, I'm three months is a long time. I realized, <laughs> so I was like, all right, how do we like, I really want to streamline yeah, Like I said, I learned a lot through that whole process, which was the point. It was kind of like a, an experiment of sorts. Um, and I was very upfront with people that that's why people were coming in at such a low price point for the whole course, um, was a very low cost so that I could kind of like work out the bugs, you know, so to speak, and they were still getting the value, but maybe, you know, not presented in the most um, efficient way possible. So I was able to just learn a lot about that. Did you, so, do you see yourself doing this uh, summer thing again, ongoing? Um, yeah, but I'm not going to do a three month course again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a, like, I, I'm considering taking the three, the three months of content and actually, um, condensing it down to a month, like, um, and maybe two or maybe three days a week. But if I can pre-record the lessons mm -hmm. and well, the first month, the first time I do it would be, um, would be obviously I would have to record and then the, the months after that they would be pre-recorded like I'm considering about doing like a 30-day kind of thing where like Monday through Thursday would be pre-recorded lessons and then there's tasks to go with that mm -hmm. and then Fridays I would be live and answer questions and do various things and so um, it would, the, the, all of the content would be a lot more condensed than it was for the, for the, the three month course. It just, but it helped me tremendously in what was, I got a lot of feedback on what people want to learn, what people don't really, you know, care that much about, or what, you know, it's like, I, I think that I, I think I covered everything that I covered, I think was appreciated, but there was definitely things that I'm getting some feedback from the people that took the course because I'm kind of working with them. I offered them a 20 minute um, follow up uh, each like a one on one with each of them. So I can get a little bit of an idea of 
a testimonial and things that can be improved, um, you know, things that I, I would just like to know. And, and the feedback that I'm getting is that there wasn't enough technique coaching. And, and I, you know, it's hard to do with 15 people on the call. It's really hard to coach, you know, it's like, I prefer technique coaching with like one-on-one, -on -one. but, and, and the idea is to just to coach one person in front of a bunch of people. And hopefully they come away with a lesson still, even if they're not actually being the one being coached, but I'm still trying to figure out how to, how to do that. So, um, but, uh, well, but yeah, I had a blast doing it. I'm, I'm sure that it's, I mean, it's not going to be easy teaching technique to people who have all different kinds of dolls, you know, I mean, you can't, it's just not possible because they'll have specific questions that, you know, how do I do this? And, you know, they have different what, Jim? Dolls. Oh, no, I'm talking about vocal technique. I'm oh, I see. Actually, voiceover style or voiceover read, like reading copy, script reading lessons. Oh, that's I see. What I mean by okay. technique. Yeah. Um, sorry, that uh, you have tech and you have technique. So I think tech is more, yeah, like, I, I taught a lot about how to build your home studio, made recommendations on little things and, you know, but like vocal technique and read like script reading, script analysis, that seems to be what people really wanted more of in this, but mm -hmm. it was tough. With, like I said, with 15 people on a call for me to coach one person with a bunch of other people watching, you know, I was hoping that people would, like I said, be able to come away with lessons just being able to watch, but people also want to be coached. Like they want to be that person, but it's hard to get to 15 people on a one hour call, <laughs> you know? Right. So, um, so I'm just kind of like trying to figure out how do I do that? This is, you know, um, you know, how do I provide that value? Maybe that's what I would be doing on Fridays or whatever, you know, but there's, uh, you know, if I were to do like an actual, like five days a week for four weeks, like a 30 day kind of thing, um, you know, like I, I would like to do that. Um, I don't know exactly when I probably will wait until after the holidays at this point, I'm probably not going to do it, but just to kind of have the breather and also give everybody else a breather too. Cause it's like, I'm not going to do it over Thanksgiving and all that stuff between Christmas and Thanksgiving. And there's like a lot of days that it would be like, well, what are we doing? You know, like, so I'm probably at this point going to wait. Cause even if I did it for like the month of November, I yeah, uh, actually, I mean, I, I couldn't get it together in that, that quickly anyway, but mm -hmm. there's, there's definitely, there's a lot of work involved on the front end to, to make it happen. So mm -hmm. I'll probably just wait until the end, until like early 2023 at this point and start, start something like that, put it together. Now, as, as far as going back to uh, the, the marketing uh, that you're <laughs> in the works or contemplating or what have you. Is that going to be something that maybe Terry can put on our YouTube classroom, YouTube channel type thing that we might be able to, just if we want a refresher, you know, would that be something that we might be able to have access to? Well, oh, of course. Um, well, I'm not sure how we're going to distribute it. I think that I'm probably going to, I, I haven't talked to Terry if he has like a separate email list of just Big Kahuna because anybody else that hasn't signed up for the Big Kahuna isn't eligible for that information, right? The marketing mm -hmm. is only included in the Big Kahuna. So the thing is, is if any, you know, it, I don't, it's a matter of finding those people and emailing that information out. I did consider just creating the actual file, like an, like a video file and um, offering it on like Dropbox for download or whatever, you know? So I'm not, because the thing is, is with our student only YouTube channel, not everybody has, is eligible for the marketing stuff. 
So right. it's a matter of people re like if, if we miss anybody then I'm happy to send them the link if they're eligible for it, but it may be a little kind of touch and go for the first couple of weeks when that first, when that first happens, Terry and I haven't have to talk more with him moving. It's just, everything's just yeah. up in the air right now. Yeah. So thankfully the worst, it sounds like the, the, the most work is over for him. He's just kind of like settling in now and stuff. So, um, I'm, you know, excited for him to be able to kind of just settle into his house and like next week should be a little bit less hectic than this week. No, less. not that you guys we really saw a difference, but obviously I did because I'm on the back end of it and knowing how much he normally posts, how much he interacts with stuff and how much I do and like how much I interact with Terry like that even like took a huge like he and I talk several times a day usually uh, not like usually messages back and forth but um he was pretty much like MIA for the week you know so which I expected so once things you know get back next week we'll start to I'll start to kind of hammer out and a little bit of a strategy, I guess, on how we distribute that video, where it's going to go, where it's not going to be seen by people that haven't actually, that are not eligible for that information. So it's going to be, you know, but we may just wind up emailing it one by like, you know, kind of putting it somewhere and, and avail, making it available for a free digital download. Um, mm -hmm. cause we're going to have to put it in somewhere anyway to have current students that are eligible for it once they get to that point to be able to just access it. So we're going to put it somewhere where it's just going to be accessible, you know, like permanently. So, but it might be like just a Dropbox link. It's a large file. Um, you know, it's going to be a large file or at least in several large files. It's going to be like a, an hour plus video file, but you know, um, like I said, I'll be able to, we, you know, may, maybe I'll even, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. There's a lot of options with it. We just haven't figured out the exact details yet. So, but um, yes, please keep, I mean, you know, definitely I have a bunch of people asking. So I'm like, I really have to get it done. Everybody's like, hey, did you get that marketing video done yet? I'm like, I know I've been talking about it for so long. And I just, it's a matter of just mentally preparing and also, and also it's video. I kind of, you know, I want to look good. So it's like, by the time, you know, it's like, I, I want to be able to get the hair and the makeup and everything done and look at, I know that sounds like, you know, got, got to, probably got to yeah. have a fresh, got to have a fresh purple dye job. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I know. I know it's already like fading, but you know, I, I have the stuff to touch it up, but anyway, so I may do, like I said, I'm going to, I'm trying to get that done really soon um, so that we can start to figure out how to get it out to everybody, but it's going to be housed, like I said, in probably Dropbox. Maybe we'll just make it a, a, a private YouTube link by itself and just send it out. You know, maybe we'll have YouTube host it. I mean, I'll always have a copy of it, obviously, because I don't like really leaving that up to chance, but um it might be easier to put it on YouTube and just send that link out to people and, and make a URL. Like I, I'm, you know, I've been like kind of like a little obsessive about my, my vanity URLs, like, you know, vohappyhour.com goes right into here, mm -hmm. you know, and if, you know, Terry likes his too, actually, he's got, uh, I think you, if you just go to voiceovercamp.com, it'll bring you to the, to the Facebook page. It's just a forwarded URL. That's all it is, you mm -hmm. know? So, but, um, but yeah, so it's, um, you know, but so maybe we'll get that is like, you know, uh, Muckstruck, and cause yeah, the thing is, is muckstruckmarketing.com goes to the pay link for anybody that's signing up for the actual marketing session separately that doesn't do big kahuna. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll make it something similar, you know, muckstruck student market. I don't know, but yeah. I'll probably just buy a URL and have it forwarded, you know, to like the, the private YouTube link. So, or maybe even Dropbox because that's, that's probably where it's going to be anyway, but um, I could, I could make it available for automatic download. I know how to do that to actually, so that when you click on the link, it just automatically downs, downloads it to your computer. Um, or actually, 
sorry, this is helping though. Sorry, but uh, I, I have, I could put it up on Vimeo and have that hosted and have that link there. Cause you can either download, you can set it up for down, offer the download option, or they can just go to Vimeo and watch it on Vimeo. I do have a paid Vimeo account that I could, that I could, that we could use that. So, um, but anyway, so yeah, those are some options, obviously that may be my best bet actually just to put it up on Vimeo. But, um, and that way people can like click the link and watch it on there, or if they wanna keep it available, they can download it. They can download the file. I'll give them, I'll, I'll give download permissions. So, um, but right on. yeah, so, but anyway, um, so lots, lots to consider <laughs> for one little thing. But, <laughs> oh, but um, Isaac, how are you? What's going on? Oh, not too much. I'm doing pretty well. I actually had a quick question for you, by the way. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I saw that there was an event link for a voiceover conference coming up in New York City. So what are some of those conferences typically like? Like, what can people expect from them? I don't know which one you're talking about. It's um, one in December. You're not talking about the mixer, are you? Is that is that it? If it's the if it's December third, uh, that's my mixer. It's just a social event. That's not a oh, conference. Okay. But um, there was vocation recently. Um, I if I don't really go to them to be honest anymore. So I haven't really like I haven't been to VO conferences in a while. They are very beneficial if you're new. So there are, re and, and cause I don't knock them. I just don't, sometimes I just don't wind up going or if I didn't, I don't know about them. I used to go to them regularly when there was one in particular that was being held regularly. Um, it was like every six months for a while and it was all over the country. So it was like, I was just off and be off to somewhere else new every six months. It was pretty cool. Um, but I kind of got burnt out even, even before um, the pandemic hit. The last year before that, I just was like, yeah, I'm starting to get older. Like, I don't know. It was just something about it that I was like, you know, but then I was going to go when the pandemic hit, there was the same month, March, 2020, VO Atlanta was supposed to happen and got canceled because of the pandemic. But I was supposed to go. I just wasn't supposed to go to the actual conference. I was supposed to stay in the hotel with a couple of girls that were going and we were all going to just get grab a room together. And I was just going to go to the bar and wait for people to come out of session so that I could see people. It was like a social thing for me. But if you're looking at going to conferences, they can be very, very good because that's how I got started. Kind of like that's how I got started in getting to know people. Um, Terry and I both would go. The, my first voiceover conference was in 2010. No. 2008. Um, yeah, 2008 was social. And then I presented, Terry and I both presented in 2010 and 2012 at a conference in LA that was happening every two years. So we kind of got into the conference circuit early. And then we were keynote speakers in 2012. So, so just speakers that, you know, there's panels that talk about the industry and mm -hmm. are there workshops that you can like learn things or. It yeah, it, it depends on the conference and some of them are structured a little bit differently, but yeah, there's panels that you can just sit and listen. Sometimes there's like, you know, full, like half day, like people speaking for a long periods of time that you just, everybody sits in the same room and listens. Um, you know, some of them are, are really small kind of breakout sessions, breakout rooms that like sometimes there's six or seven going on at the same time that you kind of have to decide which ones you want to go to, or you can pop into each of them for a little while. Um, you know, um, but it depends. Everyone is a little bit more uh, is, is going to be structured differently. It depends on how much you want to spend on going. You know, but, you know, if it's, if it's obviously within driving distance for you, then that's great. I definitely would recommend going at least, you know, to save on the flight. If it's like a, over an hour away, I would say just get the hotel and take advantage of that experience of getting to know people and like, because 
that's when you kind of get to know people is the after hour stuff, right? It's like outside of the sessions is when those, some of those bonds are formed, you know? So, um, plenty of things that, that happen in just chit chatting in the hallway, you know? And so it's, I always explain it. If you stay in the hotel of the conference, it's kind of like getting the, the, between that and commuting, let's say you live a half an hour away from the conference and you commute each day for it, you're not going to get the same experiences to everybody that's staying at the hotel. It's kind of like commuting to college and living at college, right? It's not quite the same experience. So if you have the extra money to spend and you don't, but at least you, if you live within a couple of hours and you're dry and you want to drive, at least you'll save on the flight, but I would spend money on the hotel and take advantage of that experience if it is near you. Um, but if not, and you want to spend, it's a great investment. You get to write it off. I mean, it is a write-off, you know, so no matter how far you go. Um, so, you know, I do, I do recommend it. You get to know people, you learn stuff, you know, sometimes the social aspect is even more important than what you could actually, some of the nuggets that you can get from those conferences. What you can learn is great if you can focus on, on it because it's a lot, it's very, it's, it's exciting, you know, it's like, and it is a little nerve wracking for some people to go to a conference like that, especially by themselves, you know? So the people that you can connect with sometimes winds up being more valuable than the actual information they're giving. Mm -hmm. right? That networking opportunity can really make a difference. It did, like I said, in 2008, when Terry and I went to that conference in LA, everybody was kind of just for, like all of those first circles were just starting to form online. Like, yeah, and Terry and I were, were lucky because we just happened to be hosting a podcast that was pretty well known in our smaller circles. And we were, we were kind of popular. I hate to use that term, but like, you know, people knew who we were, big fish in small pond kind of thing, you know? So we walked into this conference as the podcast hosts that people knew us, you know? And so there was a lot of, including the people that were running the show, that were running the, the conference itself, mm -hmm. you know? It's about 400 people, you know, at this first, the, the first conference we went to. Yeah. So, you know, it was... um it was great, you know, but we, and we, a lot of people knew who we were because, you know, we were, we had a, we had a podcast. It was pretty much one of the first voiceover podcasts that ever were, ever was really, there was a few smaller ones, but like we had people on, we had the, and that was, that was Terry's idea too. We, it just started as just him and I kind of just shooting the whatever about the industry and just talking. And then, and then he's like, well, so-and-so wants to be on the show. Do you think we should get like a guest? I'm like, yeah, let's try that. <laughs> and all of a sudden that's the format that we wound up sticking with for quite a while mm -hmm. because people loved it. Like, honestly, like we used to just enter, we interviewed some really kind of key players in the industry at that point, not just talent, but people like John Florian, who runs, uh, still runs voiceoverextra.com. You know, like that was a really, that was a new concept. It was new at the time. You know, it's become such a source to, in the industry, but you know, that's kind of how it all started. So, you know, I, if you guys, I, there's still a lot of actually decent information. Um, uh, what is it? Voiceovercafe.org is the website. And you guys can see, so this, this picture even, I'm, I'll share it in the chat. You guys can have a laugh. And, and if you want to, you can check out, go to the, if you go to the shows tab that's at the top and, and you scroll kind of all the way down, um, yeah, all of the episodes are there, even from the really old, the original voiceovers on demand show. So the voiceover cafe came that was like our second attempt that was like every but which we haven't done an episode in years but terry and i would host but we had a bunch of other guys that were garnet actually from our team like he was he was actually sorry garnet was a host of another podcast 
and um, a voiceover podcast at the time. And we all kind of did like a super podcast at one point. One of the episodes was us all because him and his his uh, podcast partner, Mike Pongratz, and all of us got together and did an did an episode because we were all at one of these conferences all together. So we me and Terry and like all of the guy, the other guys, Jordan and and Peter Bishop and um, Matt Colrick, I think was there too. And like, and Tom Deere, like everybody was together and it was like, okay, we might as well do a show. Um, <laughs> so it was, it was a lot of fun, but you know, there's still a lot of really good information that's in those old shows. But if you go to the shows tab and then you scroll all the way down, you'll find the very original 21 episodes, just me and Terry interview. That was the voiceovers on demand podcast that was what got us known in the industry. And then kind of, and then we showed up in 2008 um, with the, like at Voice Voice 2008, Voice was the name of the conference, B-O-I-C-E. It was like an acronym. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, people knew us. They were like approaching us in the hall, like in the hallway. And they're like, are you a Terry and Trish from voiceovers on demand? And it was like, so (laughs) bizarre, like kind of, you know, so it was pretty funny. Um, but, and we had a blast doing it too, you know, but if, if you look at all, like I said, if it, you know, if you scroll all the way down, we'll have like, we have like the, all the really old, like all the old um, episodes, the voiceovers on demand episodes. But then once you hit a certain point, then you'll go to the, the voiceover cafe. Yeah. Right. Which is like, like I said, that's like me and Terry and like four other guys. <laughs> and we just had a blast doing it. So have but. you ever gone back and listened to any of them? Um, not in a while. Once, you know, like, honestly, like I'm on the page right now. Like I, I almost kind of cringe when I would hear my voice from, from that long ago. Cause it actually sounds different. Like my voice is definitely aged. Um, so sometimes I'm like, oh man, <laughs> I miss, I miss my youthful voice, but, um, you know, it's, eh, it's the way it goes, but like here, all right. Uh, I don't know. Let's see here. Uh, there's also my sound. Share sound. The department, all the casting offices that I was working with for on camera, uh, and everyone responded really well. Well, tell us exactly. New York, which which before that comment of yours, I was cursing the weather here. So. <laughs> even the even the, the even the the uh, the music is old. Hang on, benefits of SEO. Uh, wait a minute. What is this? Which one is this? <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I don't know who's speaking. Uh, let's try somebody we would actually know. Oh, this is the debut. This is the first time Terry and I had never even met in person yet when we recorded this. Good evening. This is Terry Daniel. I am speaking from Minneapolis, Minnesota. You you are listening to a brand new podcast called Voiceovers On Demand with Terry and Trish. We are two veteran voice talents who have been in the industry uh, for about 150 years. I'd love to just go on bragging about myself, but I'd rather have somebody else do that. So I'm going to have Trish introduce herself. Trish, how are you? Hey, I'm good, Terry. I am broadcasting live. Well, okay, almost live from Dallas. Um, and uh, the wonderful world of technology has made this possible. <laughs> I'm very yeah. excited to do this podcast. And we're, um, you're, you're excited because you hope that people will hear your golden voice and pay you lots and lots of money for it. Isn't that what we all want? Yeah, this all it's, you know, we want this podcast to be a educational for uh, those young voice talents trying to break into the industry. We also want it to be entertaining for the veteran savvy voice talents that have been doing it 
you know, since Eisenhower was Before president. Before it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But C, I think really most of all, it, it, it it's, it's all about our bank accounts, is it not? Yeah, well, yeah, it's it's enjoying life, too, I think. And working from home, there's nothing like it. Oh, absolutely. We, um, I work on... Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. You're like, that's enough. Um, but one. Even. Bomb, bomb, bomb. You know, done. You wouldn't believe it. There, this. Uh, yeah, this was the first time we ever worked together at all. But I'm trying to like. Uh, then we had. Okay, so John Florian was our first guest. He was voiceoverextra.com, um, which is which wound up just being a powerhouse in the industry of like news, like good information. Um. Uh, let's see, Eric Shepard, we're connected with all of these people still. We're friends with a lot of them. Um, David Houston actually doesn't do voiceovers anymore. He's a mus- he, was in, he was a musician originally, but that's okay. about it. Connie, Julie, Liz, Joan Baker, Rob Sigmund-Paglia, Eric Shepard. These are all people that are still valid and working. Are they going to be at the mixer? Some of them might be. Um, there are none of them that I just listed are local. Actually, no, I take that back. Liz is in upstate New York. Um, but yeah, James Alberger and Penny Abshire, they were uh, the, uh, they were the ones that ran the voice conference. So they did it in 2008, well, 2007, even though we weren't there. That was small. That was like less than 100 people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once this, um, the website voiceover universe, again, this was before Facebook guys, like before mm-hmm. Facebook was really a thing. So this one website called voiceover universe, which there's a Facebook group called voiceover universe now, which is the, but it's like the newer version, mm-hmm. but Rick party, who is, um, he's a, a fantastic voice, voice actor, um, he got people together on this free community called Ning, N-I-N-G. And he created this voiceover community for just voice actors. And somehow we all found each other. And all of a sudden there was like 2000 people that came to this place in like a matter of months. And because there was nowhere else that anybody was congregating together online. So we all got to know each other and that's when we post that's when we were just the timing was just impeccable that's really we got lucky on the timing you know on on how terry and i kind of started and when we started and we just happened to be talking and starting all of this months before everything happened on at voice of universe so but anyway so you know at least um you know, but it is, it is, uh, it was definitely a cool time. Definitely. You know, it was, uh, just a lot of, a lot of, um, connections and a lot of friendships that formed, you know, a lot of alliances, so to speak. You know, so nice to have that community. Hmm? It's nice to have that community. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's others now you just have to get involved. You know, they're out there, you know, we may have been the first, but we're not the only ones. And there's definitely going to be different as, as the, the industry kind of progresses, you know, but, um, but you guys get it, at least get an idea of what it was like in the olden days, (laughs) (laughs) you know, but um, hoop skirts and bonnets, right? (laughs) Your time, Al. <laughs> True, you know, but I had a, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of like, I mean, like I was still, like I was still sending out CDs mm-hmm. like, to get work, you know, like I, you know, I, I like I was sending out MP3s, like I was marketing with both, but I was still mailing out CDs at that time, you know. I know people that were doing up until like 2015 just to stand out, you know, and just, to, just for something tangible. That's why I encourage you guys to, when you get to that point where you're marketing, send out postcards because postcards are tangible and they don't require a response. 
right? It's not like you're not, it's not sending an email where they think that they have to like type a reply of some sort. You send a postcard, it's just like, oh, cool, a postcard. You don't really feel like you've ever had to send a postcard back when you've received one because it's usually somebody that it's either traveling or whatever. That's usually why we send postcards, right? So the receiver doesn't really feel like they need to respond. So they're, they're great for that. And they wind, they're tangible. So they wind up on refrigerators and like sometimes company refrigerator, you know, like they wind up on behind magnets and, or even just in a pile of, the, you know, in a, in a pile of papers on the desk, which means that they'll eventually get, you know, eventually <laughs> come across it once in a while. <laughs> if it looks anything like my desk, <laughs> you know, you come across it once in a while. It's like, oh, right. You know, so it's basically kind of like a cold mailing with postcards. So where you just have your name and your, and your website, or this is a direct response to like an audition or something that you did. I would, great question. So I do not, I, I lost a lot of money pairing up with another talent, <clears throat> buying a list and just sending out a huge email, uh, sorry, a huge postcard campaign to people that we had never done business with. Mm -hmm. The way that I use them now is that I, when I market by email, when I do email marketing, and it's somebody that I've, that has asked for my demo or responded in some way, then I, I send them a postcard instead of following up again. You know, when I say, when I reach out to somebody by email and I say, hi, do you accept voiceover demos? And they email me back and they say, yes, we do. Please send me one. Or we've already gone to your website and downloaded it. We'll keep you on file. You sound great, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then nothing, which often happens because they're not going to need you. Chances are they're not going to need you immediately, right? I've literally heard back a year after I've sent somebody a demo. So that's why I tell you guys, you don't know what's going on underneath the surface. Just keep going because when things start to pop, there's a few things that may pop up at once, but you won't see anything for a little while. You're not going to necessarily see the fruits of your labor yeah, you know, and, and it, it may just literally all happen at once. Right. You know, if you do a bunch of stuff and you just keep going, even if you don't feel like you're getting results, there's stuff going on. People are talking about you. It's just not, it, you just not need it yet, you know, because they often won't respond until they absolutely need you, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, so I would only recommend Mayor is sending out postcards to people that you've had some sort of connection with that know who you are. I do know people that have done very specific niche marketing that have done well with postcard marketing, but personally, I lost a lot of money, a lot uh, on that one campaign. You had to get lost money. What? <laughs> You had me at lost money. Yeah, it's, it's, it wasn't fun. Um, we sent it to, cause you not, you know, we not only, we paid for the, the, po the, to have the postcards designed cause it was his logo and my logo and they were big cards. They were seven by nines. They weren't Ooh, four by that's six. That's not a postcard. Yeah. Well, they're, yeah, but they're still like flyers, right? They're mini flyers, but it's postcard material. Mm. So when we had, um, Actually, do you remember uh, my one? My girlfriend Lois actually posted it in my frameworks group. We had a laugh over it. I don't know if you remember seeing that. Hang on. Uh, I, I do. I don't remember specifically what it said, but I remember you posted about it. I was lit. No, I lived with her after I had them. I can't remember. She and I were roommates for a period of time, right around the time that. Oh yeah, here it's, this is, this is funny. It's just like, it's so I'm just getting all nostalgic. Sorry, but, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, so this, this was the, this was the front and back of the postcards. So I teamed up with my buddy, Sean Caldwell, who is an incredibly talented VO artist down in Tampa. And we got together, we had these 
you know, designed. We had the 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 images designed, and we he put you know his stuff and my stuff. Like it had both of our logos and and everything. And so we and this came. This was a post, by the way. My one girlfriend Lois must have found one in her in her like she's got a box of stuff somewhere, and somehow one of these wound up in it. But we wound up sending like. 4,000 of these. Oh my. Yeah. We printed out, we, we basically, we paid for the design. We paid for the printing and then you pay for the postage, right? For, for four, it was like 4,000 postcards and nada. Oh, nothing. Right. Yeah. It was, it was quite, it was an investment. So at time wise also, and it was just like, crickets nothing um so it depends but you know so that's why i do you know if you do plan on doing some postcard marketing i i recommend it being to an audience like a warm audience already you know just people somebody that knows who you are right you know? but yeah because we we bought we bought a list of you know a bunch of places but you know it's like so uh, I don't, yeah, it was, it was a lot, <laughs> but you know, live and learn. <laughs> so it's, um, okay. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, that's what you, you know, and that's why it pays to listen to a pro because <laughs> I made all the mistakes and <laughs> you guys don't wind up wasting the money on, you know, I was just going to say, we, we, now we don't have to make that mistake. No, exactly. Yes. Please Thank don't. you, Trish. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> new mistakes. Yeah. We'll play pl plenty of new mistakes to make up for the ones. Right. Well, it's, yeah, I suppose. We'll do that. something. We'll do something. Don't worry. We won't let you down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to joke that that's why we charge so much because we were trying to make back what we lost on our mistakes, <laughs> not to make them, but <laughs> you know, it's, uh, but you know, like I said, every, and the thing is, is I do know someone that again, went on like a niche, like had, he printed his own postcards on his own printer. I've done that. Went like did the research on a very specific niche of voiceover, sent out a hundred of them and got a ton of work. Huh. What so, was the, you know what the niche was? Um explainer videos. Ah. Yeah. So it's uh and this we're talking like 10 years ago. So I don't even know if it would work now. I have no idea. It but be, it would be more than a hundred. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, he's he just there was nobody else doing it that way. That's why that's why you got to reach out, like do the the marketing stuff that I recommend because going on the pay to play is where everybody else is. You have you know, like it's good for practice, but if you don't want to spend, you know, it's like don't expect to necessarily make your money back. Sometimes sometimes people do, but for the most part, it's that should be a place to practice, right? A place to get the get the new scripts and get the, you know, get used to recording yourself, editing yourself and sending it off. And that's the getting comfortable with that whole process. But with my method, you'll actually get work and, <laughs> and get paid. Um, you know, it's just, but it takes longer to build that up than it does with the pay to plays sometimes. So know? Trish, if we don't do the pay, pay to play, if we don't do that, where do you get the practice from? There's not, there's not going to be much. That's the thing is you, you, I would, I would recommend uh, joining some sort of workout program, um, you know, voiceover workouts or practice where you're practicing with other people. And again, we're, we're talking about maybe offering that at some point. And it's great. Like that's the Saturday morning things every other Saturday morning. Right. Um, and those are know, valuable. Very, but I'm talking about like recording the, the whole practicing, recording, editing, sending it off type of thing. I know that's, there really isn't, there, there isn't anything that is other than the pay to plays. There's not really anything out there that d does that specifically. Trish, know? Trish, yeah. I was watching a YouTube video. I don't even remember the name of the individual, but she was talking about, there is a site where you can do 
books or chapters of books or oh, and it's probably the CX. Oh no, this is completely free. I mean, you don't get paid for it. It's just just to get that experience. What in the world was that? Oh, called? okay. Oh, they definitely. I'm sure I, I'm not surprised. I figured that yeah. there might be something else out there, but you know, I mean, you can just go into a scripts, you know, scripts, edges, edge studio script library and just download a bunch of scripts and record them and edit them. I mean, you know how to receive, you know how to open an email and you know how to send an email. Right. So that doesn't need to be really like, <laughs> well, I wait there. Wait, wait. <laughs> We need to talk, <laughs> but, I mean, you know, but at the same time, like, so it's really just the recording, editing, recording and editing process. So you can get scripts from anywhere, honestly, you know, like there, there's, you know, a ton of like, you can just pull stuff off the internet and just record it, edit it, and you know, get used to it that way. Um, you know, so, but, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure that there's, yeah, if you think of that, Jim, if you want to post it or whatever, feel free. Um, you know, if you if you remember what it is, but uh, I don't know it offhand. But you know, we've had also people that have started that have, um, uh, um, what word formed their own group. You know, just start your own group if you want to. You know, like maybe you guys will, you guys are all, you know, like Al, Mayor and Jim, you guys are kind of around the same, you know, um, uh, level in the program where you can, you could form a group if you wanted to, an accountability group of some sort. You know, I didn't mean to leave Isaac out of that, but he's not working with us yet. So <laughs> it's kind of funny that you should say something like that because I was actually going to approach Mayor and Al both to see if they would be willing to just listen when I when I edit something, just be willing to listen to it. Not necessarily my read, maybe just just the the sound of it, because I'm still having trouble with like the sound of the room and you know that kind of stuff. And I, you know, sometimes your own ear deceives you. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's funny that you should mention that. I was going to ask if if either one of you would mind if and you guys could do the same. I mean, I don't know where you guys are at in the but it's two years, well, four years are better than two, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's plenty of people that have like st what's called uh, stand up groups. They're, you know, um, or, or any kind of voiceover accountability. They're just, you know, practice, copy reading practice, and they meet once a week on Zoom or, you know, once every couple of weeks, whatever it is, you guys can work out whatever you'd like. If you, you know, like I encourage you to, cause it'll, the accountability alone helps. And so, you know, I'd like to do something. I, we want to start doing calls. Um, I, I want to start hosting calls that are going to be weekly that help with that, to help with people with accountability, with ideas, with marketing, whatever I can kind of like a, like a career coach kind of stuff. Like once you guys are done with the program and you're kind of out in the world doing the thing mm -hmm. or trying to do the thing, which is kind of like how it goes for a little while, right? You're still trying to figure things out. It's like, there is a little bit of this kind of, you know, just so you guys are prepared you know, it's like having that feeling of, okay, I have my demo, I have my demos, I have my website, I'm done with the program. What do I do now? Like, I don't have, you don't have a path anymore, right? Because right now you guys have your curriculum, right? You have the, you have what you should be doing next, you, or you have your, what you're waiting for, you know? And once that's over, you kind of like, it's like staring out into the ocean. You don't really have this kind of this path, right? So, you know, it's, there's so many options, but some people just get, you know, it's like you have so many options and so many opportunities at that point, but some people need that kind of like to be able to like look ahead and go, okay, like I need, I need somebody to help guide me what I should do and what I should focus on next. So that's kind of what we're thinking about offering. Even if I wind up doing it, you know, like it'll, it'll be just a, a service for everybody, you know, um, like anybody. Like, a, like an a la, a la carte kind of service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right so 
it depends on, you know, on, on how, you know, how Terry feels about it. We've talked about it a little bit, but you know, he hasn't landed on anything yet. So I would like to do that. I would like to, you know, have that kind of offer that accountability to people, you know, um, and, and that way you guys have access to me, not just through messenger, it's becoming a lot. It's honestly like, there's a lot, like now that we have so many students, there's, you know, I I'm, I'm hearing from between five and 15 people a day and wow. it's, you know, I, and I love doing it and I try to get back to people as much as I can. And I, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty good at it, you know, about like getting back to people. And like, I, I, you know, I know once in a while I drop off and then I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And I think I've probably done it to all of you at some point, you know, it's like, and I, so I try to go back and like, do I have anything that I need to like catch up with? Um, you know, but if we have a place where we can kind of all, where I know I'm going to see you every week, mm -hmm. or at least maybe even a separate group, um, a Facebook group that we can all, that you guys can all kind of uh, congregate together in order. So there's a, there's a lot of options obviously with it, but we'll see what happens. Nothing, nothing set in stone yet. You know, it's just nice. kind of all ideas running around my head as always. <laughs> <laughs> trying to, you know, offer a better service and offer just, you know, more things that I feel like our, our graduates are needed, you know, like the, like kind of things that people need once they're done with the program, you know, cause we're always here, you know, like we're here for you, but you, but some people feel bad about reaching out or they, or they, they just don't for whatever reason, it's like life gets in the way and People get busy and it's like, unless I actually reach out and go, hey, you got your demos a month ago, your website and everything's done. Like, are you working? Are you, you know, are you marketing? What are you doing? You know, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of that going on right now. So I would like to offer something where it keeps people in our circles just to be able to give them that kind of hope and that accountability to like keep going, you know, and just to be able to see that path and see the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, because it can be overwhelming. Once yeah. you're done with the, like I said, once the program's over, it's, it's like, okay. And, and even though we've given you everything that you need at that point, it's still a little overwhelming. It's still mm -hmm. a lot to be learned. It's a lot to, to absorb, you know, so um, I would love to be able to, like I said, offer that kind of service. So, you know, we will, uh, we will see. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm on the frameworks group, Mayor, and I didn't even realize you put, I don't, I, why don't I get notified about these things? What did I put? On October 3rd, you posted your, you posted, I'm looking at the post of your um, logo. Oh, <laughs> I was when I thought you just hated it. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, I don't get notifications. I own the group. I think and somehow awesome. I don't get notified when people post in it all the time. I so, think you hated it. I just thought maybe she just didn't like it. So <laughs> no, I no, I would give you feedback either way, but I like it. I like it. I think it's yeah. I mean, it's good. It's going to be some work. It, that was very much a, just a throw together. Let's see what it, if, if that seems to be my vibe and I, and the hiker thing really, really struck with me. Yeah, I think so just to, I actually prefer, I think I like it without the, um, the, the moniker at the bottom. Just, oh, really? Just, yeah. Maybe change, I don't know, something about it, but everything else, I like the whole design. I like the font at the top, like the, the name, you know, VO by Mare, like it's, it's, you know, and it's, it, it does, it reflects you, but the, the line, the, the, the sentence down there, I don't know. Not the, your load. Yeah. I don't is know how much. Too, is it too cheesy? No, I just, no. I just don't know if it's accurate. I feel like you want to be, I don't know. It's a, it might be a little too dramatic. <laughs> What's do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, yeah. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Load. Yeah. No. Like, I don't know if, you know, <laughs> I don't know. 
I, I mean, you don't need that. That's the thing. So you, you could even just get rid of it and it wouldn't matter. Like it, you just not replace it with anything. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's not just dis descriptive to what we do really. You know what I'm saying like, and I know VO by mayor is, so that's really all that's needed, but I don't know. I, I was like, going for like, a, you know, I got your back. I can, you know, I can take care of anything that you guys want to get done type of thing. Yeah. That's the vibe I was going for. Yeah. I would actually try to maybe some sort of play on words with the hiker or hiking, you know, uh, idea. Okay. You know, maybe try to try to play around with that kind of idea is like, um, yeah, I would have to think about it, but somebody that's really good at like wordsmithing, yeah. they would probably have fun with this, you know, instead of like, um, my wife's a writer. I'll get catchy. it. Yeah. Something catchy though, that okay. goes with like, like, okay. So mine is, where's my, well, I'm in the middle of my, my you guys do not want to see my desk right now. <laughs> um, oh, here it is. You guys have, I'm sure you guys have seen this before, but if you look at it closely, mm -hmm. what does it say at the bottom? Voiceover specials. Voiceover specials. It's a dish. With uh, chopsticks too. Like special, like, like, yeah. like specials like a, on a menu. Okay. Yeah. So. And yes, that might take a little bit longer to, you know, to, to sink in for some people, but I would recommend something like that. Okay. That is, is that, you know, kind of, like I said, some sort of play on words that goes, that, that ties into the visual. Okay. Right. So, you know, uh, tell everyone else to take a hike or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know like, That's a good one. <laughs> You know, but um, something like that. Yeah. So if you're, what is it, can take a hike. what's your wife's <laughs> name, Mayor? Is it Kathy? Kathy. Kathy. Have her, have her play around with the idea, you know, of like just tying in the idea of the hiker, a little bit of a, a pun or a play on words or a double meaning. Loves puns. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would do instead to make it light and fun, mm -hmm. you know, then I would definitely go with something like that. Okay. Yeah, because it might be just a little too that line. Let me carry your load might be just a little too heavy. I don't really know how to. Well, without actually, that is a play on words right there. Uh, Pun intended. Heavy, but yeah, you know, but like, because yeah, I've been playing in Canva on creating a, a logo for my website. Nice. Uh, I'm trying to find somebody who really knows either canva or photoshop uh my actually there were funny issue i can show you what i got the draft of but it's getting the round sort of picture of my headshot and then wrapping the text around it and uh i've been having problems sort of getting that exact circle cut when you're sort of trying to expand it out mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> I don't know anything about Canva. It's it's pretty cool to to look at to to work with. I've done a couple of different things on it, but it's not it's not very friendly when you come to when you go to edit it differently than what they have. Yeah, you know, like they have templates and stuff. And I did the whole trying to round it around, you know, that kind of thing. I, I was able to get the text to wrap around. I get, you know, if uh, Trish enables uh, screen sharing, I screen share it for you so you can see it. But it's just getting it, you know, very precise on the uh, wrap around of the text. And mm -hmm. I just have to now. get that working. Hang on a second. Let's see. Oh, I found out my microphone was on backwards this whole time, this whole time. Really? Yeah. Um, is that sharing? That's 
actually, uh, yeah, I can see it. Okay. That's actually a common thing there. I wouldn't feel bad about that. A lot of people, I, during my summer course, it happened with three different people and I couldn't like, I, it, and I'm like, I, I would just, you know, that would, that would be my first uh, kind of like, they're like, it just doesn't sound right. Yeah. And that would be, yeah, that was the issue. So I said like, the same thing. He said, you're in good company. Yeah. <laughs> how many five times people. And I, and I heard about it on a podcast. I'm thinking, I heard it on a podcast. I can't believe I did it after I heard about it on a podcast, but it's like, oh yeah, the road goes in the front. All right, right on. <laughs> I, I did I did the same thing there. And Trish told me I sent her something and she said, uh, Jim, sounds like your microphone is backward. I have never <laughs> did I ever remember that? <laughs> I <laughs> had never heard of such. Jan kept sending me, I was sending this stuff to Jan. He was like going, uh, make it, make it in between negative six and negative 12. And I was like, going, I can't freaking get it there. I'm yelling as loud as I can in my mic and I can't get it there. And then I'm finally going, huh, maybe. <laughs> I know a lot of people just don't, I probably didn't, I didn't know that early on either. So it's like, yeah, it's not something, but the thing is certain microphone, which is why certain microphones have the word back on it. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at it, you're on the yeah. wrong end. <laughs> well, it's so dark. I, I would have needed, it's small letters. Okay. Oh I'm, yeah. Yeah, probably it is. Tiny, tiny. So what are you showing us Al? Uh, I was just showing you the my picture with the text wrapped around it. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Oh, I see what you mean about it. Yeah, not. So I yeah. need need to do a little work on this. I would just move. Or is is it all one piece? Can you just move it up just a, just a tad so that the because I see how the how the word professional is touching. Yeah. Well, the pro I see that the problem is is that circle picture of me is not actually an exact round circle uh, and i need uh i wouldn't worry a tool about it. that can say okay make the circle it, bigger or smaller so it's the size we need and just trim the edges off of it so then i have that perfect uh circle of that image i it, think if the text is just by exactly, itself what if the text is just by itself like as one as one element the text is by itself, but on Canva, the way it's sort of snapping around, it's probably pilot error. Um, uh -huh. I can't get it to exactly position itself okay. uh, like I need it to be. Yeah, so I don't know if it. it's really necessary, but I, I get it, you know. So I would just, I would go back into Canva and maybe just see if you can take the whole element of the text and just move it up just a hair yeah. so that there's a little bit of a space in between but nobody's going to look at it and go is that a perfect circle you know but the only thing that's noticeable even once i started looking at it is the fact that professional the word professional is touching the picture and the bottom half is not yep so if you i think if you just took the whole thing and just move it up just a little bit so that they're both they both kind of are, are a little bit separated I think that'll probably be better and fine. You know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go crazy over making sure that it's exact. Anyway, that's what I'm working on. Okay. I don't know how to <laughs> stop the screen sharing or if you can stop it. Um, you, you click the red button at the top. It's like a little, there is no red button on my screen. <laughs> it should be, um, if you click, it should be, um it should show up or if it, if it's at the bottom uh, all, if you click all on, i have is the thumbnails on one page and oh here we go Sorry. yay yes <laughs> but that that's what i'm working on okay. and that'll replace the present just the round picture of me on my website yeah i can uh scale that down to be either put on bit on business cards or wherever i need yeah yeah um yeah the, the i think the, i told you for uh irene i uh built her uh qr codes to put on the back of her business cards oh cool okay all right so yeah now that you, QR you, you need to know how to do that i know exactly how to do that <laughs> I actually have one on my cell phone. The conference that I went to last month. Um, Wait, I got COVID. 
Yeah, yeah where I got COVID. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, that's what can I get for spending. We can laugh about it now, Trish. You spent four days in the same room with five thousand people. Uh, it's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen. You shot, gotta pick up something. Shot. But anyway, so I have a QR code on yep. my on my lock screen, and so and this is still left over from it. I thought I'm just gonna probably leave it because if somebody if I'm talking to somebody and they're like. They're like, oh, what do you do? But I'm standing in line at the grocery store, which happens sometimes. And yeah. you just wind up chit chatting. Somebody's writing a check in front of you. And it's like you're sitting there, you know, and it's just like you wind up striking up a conversation with the person, next person in line. And, you know, whomever it is, you know, and all of a sudden it's like you're headlong into a conversation with a perfect stranger. And it's like, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a voice actor. And, you know, and they're like, oh, that's cool. I've always wanted to do that. I'm like, well, here. <laughs> and so, you know, or I teach or I, whatever it is, you know, or the, if, if, if I'm really lucky, it's like an ad agency or something, which has happened. Also, I've run what into it. What does that QR code go to? It goes to, I actually don't remember. <laughs> uh, um, it goes to, um, I don't know. I don't know if it'll pick, I don't know if it'll start out. If I do it, here, I don't know if it'll pick up. If you guys want to try to scan it, I don't know if you guys want to try to scan it, but it, it probably won't work through the screen. But hang on, let me try it just for grins. Nah, it's probably too blurry, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Um, it goes to, I think it's, it's some kind of, it's some sort of link tree, you know, like I have like a, a link to a bunch of links, you know, it's like a page that has a bunch of links to my website and all that, which is actually, oh, you know, and I just realized is my website's still down. Crap. Mm -hmm. Crap. It's still down. You What's can that try out? that. What is, is that yours? Yes. Sure did. Ooh, they always nothing like getting work on a Friday night. <laughs> oh, it's just one. Oh, wait. oh no. Okay, no, they're actually uh, one of my clients that's in Vegas, so they're not their day isn't over yet. They always get me, they always get me at after hours. But um, yeah. Where does it did that did it work there? No. Was Al's thing? Do it again, Al. Let me try it again on another one. You should have put it in your contacts. You would think. Okay. I don't know if it's going to work. It's probably too blurry. Mm, this one doesn't want to do it. Yeah. Nothing found. Yeah. Meh. But once I was like, there was actually, so I used something called, um, like everybody uses Linktree or there's like two big ones, but I, I found this one called Flow, Flow Page. And um, that's, where, that's where it goes for me, Flow Page, yeah. Um, sign in and it was it was just an added feature that they had it's a free thing it's a free service that's nice and yeah and i was like oh okay oh i had oh wow i had 300 total clicks that's great mm. um that's really but, nice yeah it was mostly probably from the conference but yeah um yeah, I'll show you guys. So this is flow code. Yeah, this is flowcode.com. Flow pages. So they have like uh, 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 that directs to your like website or something. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a link 
this is my profile, right? So, and it doesn't look exactly like this, but this is what it looks like actually, preview here. So this is what it looks like. This is the link that it brings you to if you were to follow that QR code, right? So it's a link to a bunch of links and that's yeah. what Linktree is for because there's a lot of, you know, like all the apps that you can only upload one link. Yeah. So it kind of came from that originally was Instagram only allows one clickable link. You can paste it or copy, like copy and paste it, but it doesn't show up as an actual clickable link inside Instagram unless it's in your bio and you can only use one. So people were having a link to all of your other links instead of having to choose if it's your website or whatever, you have a link that, that then offers a bunch of links. So you could do this on your regular website. You know, yeah. if you know how to do that, you just build an extra web page, which I did, but it doesn't look as nice. This makes it look nicer. Plus it's free. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so there's like my, you know, my TikTok, I have my YouTube work. There's like, you know, my actual voiceover website, um, you know, and, and sometimes I'm changing it, you know, like I'll have a, I have a link to my frameworks group and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Um, you know, and then you can choose the, the picture and there's a lot of, there's a lot of cool options with it. And so, um, where is it? No, that's it. So, um, I don't know how to get back. There it is. So, you know, but anyway, it gives you some, sometimes analytics. Oh, oh, okay. You know, yeah, it's, I'm sure they're collecting something that's, you know, like and in exchange for the, the free access for everything. But, you know, like, yeah, 72 clicks in the last 90 days. That's been, you know, most of those, have, I'm sure, were from the conference, you know. But, yeah, there's a lot of cool information. There's, you know, so it's, uh, like I said, the design options. You know, like I had, um, I don't even know how I found it actually. How did I find it? It's like the QR thing, QR code thing was kind of came out of nowhere. I don't remember exactly how I found it. Very South by Southwest tech. Something you would find at South by Southwest that would like like Twitter. Oh, I don't know what that means. What is that? What like do you mean tw Twitter got its 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 big hype at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. This is the festival. Oh, okay. Never mind. Just just. No, I mean I know the festival. I didn't know how it, how it. I didn't know how it tied into a program, but okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I um, <coughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember how I got the QR code, but it was all familiar. It was like super easy. And I was like, oh, like do your own QR code. And I'm like, really? I'm like, it was that, it was so simple. I couldn't believe it actually worked. <laughs> Cause normally you're just like, like, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, it's gonna be so easy. And then it's like, it takes forever to get done. Well, this was the literally the opposite. It was like the night before the conference. And somebody's like, oh, I did this thing. And, and it wasn't even through the same, it wasn't through the flow flow page or whatever. It was through yeah, another website. Under, is it under create maybe? Create a QR code? Yeah, I, I tried that. Maybe you've already done it. Maybe since okay. you've already done it, it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, already. Yeah, I don't really know, but yeah. so yeah. But you know, it's a, it's a it's a cool tool. So anyway, okay. Listen to this, guys. Hiking up your business. Huh? Huh? Getting there. Ah, I like it. All right. But something in that, yeah. I would I would stay on that path. <gasps> what? I think you nailed it. Something about what? path. Oh my God. Al's already done it. <laughs> if you need to have a QR code made, that's mine. 
it takes right. like five minutes. All right. It's easy. And if you want to have a picture in the center, just like mine has, you can actually either have your picture or your initials or whatever you want. Oh, yeah. And it's that usually that's like a little added thing. I remember. Is it still free? Well, I own a license for the software, so for uh, me, it's infinitely free. Oh. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks for sharing that. Um, what were you saying about path? What? 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 The hiking path. Something. Something about a path. Yeah. Instead of hike, I mean, I like hike, but like, um. Al, can you can you change can you take that off? Stop. I am trying to. Oh. <laughs> just like before, and the uh, no oh, here the menu it's just a came. Little, oh, it's on here. Yeah. Back. I don't actually don't know. Okay. Um, yeah, hiking. Not you know something about a path. What's like trail what's related to a, a you know like hiking, but not saying the actual word like what a you know keeping i don't know it's not like you don't want it to be like motivational that's the thing is like you that don't want the it first to be motivational no like i said it's not really it's, it's not made to evoke emotion mm -hmm. it's really more of like just a cool catchphrase like something mm -hmm. fun is like oh that's clever okay thing, right that's the feel i think and I'm not saying that it's wrong if you do that, but I think it might be, it's not as it's people are, that's mo mostly how people do it. I think is, is more of just, just having that little bit of an eyebrow raised, like a little play on words, but nothing like that's going to, you know, mm -hmm. evoke too much emotion, just kind of like, oh, that's cool. Like um, hit the trail. It could be hit my trail. <laughs> I mean, it sounds kind of like doomy, but I, I don't yeah, know it kind really of does. what I'm wanting to do. <laughs> I don't know that I really want to go that path. No, yeah, probably not. Uh, right. But right. I, I think I'll work on it. Yeah, I'll work on like something about, I was going to say something about like granola or, or like, you know, we, you want, we, you want something cheeky, something, something that yeah. they're going to like. Can you know, raise an eyebrow or smirk at. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's like out, but... got you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but no, if it. I'll do it. That, she'll 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 have a blast if once we put her, I think, in that direction. Okay. She works overnight. She has nothing else to do except <laughs> work on this for me. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, anything hiking related, you can use the word hiking if you can figure it out. But like, mm -hmm. just because like I said, like years ago, one of my friends, VO friends, her name is Pearl. And she was like, we were all kind of at a conference, hanging out in the lobby one night, you know, and, and all of a sudden she's like, yeah, she's like, I think I want to do something. I, I need a new logo or whatever. And, you know, and I'm like, and she's like, I don't know. I keep thinking like the voice, like the pearl, like the voice, you know, voice of, of a pearl or something. And I was like, and I was like the voice over gem. And she was like, oh, and I don't know. I don't remember if she actually wound up using it or not. But the idea was that you're saying it without saying it. So like if you're showing the visual of hiking, do something connected to hiking, but not actually mentioning the word, maybe. The, hike, the word hiking could work, but make sure you explore your options with something yeah. about the trail or something about, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I know that carry, I know, I understand that the, the yeah. carry, let me carry your load. I get it, but the, the backpacking thing. Yeah. But it might be a little too much, like I said, for like a little too serious. Maybe you want to work with the same idea, but make it lighter like a lighter feel to it, word it in some sort of way that it, it's, it just feels more fun yeah, instead of, instead of putting too much weight specifically, like actually, sorry, <laughs> too much weight on it, you know, but, um, you know, 
something that conveys that, but but that still makes it fun. Make sure VO by mayor is one. Right on. Yeah. Just an idea. Yeah, something like that. I would keep it short, like yeah. voiceover specials. I would keep it somewhat, not necessarily three words, but I would definitely make it short because the more you have, if you wind up kind of attaching it to your dev, to your um, your logo all the time, I would I would make it shorter, you know, just enough that you can like you can kind of place it wherever you want. Daily VO heights. <laughs> Oh, wait, who? That's Al. That's Al. Why don't I see that? It was a direct message. Oh, oh um, in case, in case she's. You know, what said, are you doing leaving me out, her, She could just leave it alone. Oh, okay. I actually I like forgot that. you could do direct messaging here. Daily VO Heights. I kind of like that. That's cool. That's something definitely to like. Same answer. here. Yeah, it's like a it's a cool thing to consider, definitely. Like, but yeah, talk I mean, to Kathy and see what happens. Achieving the pinnacle of that voiceover performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, it is the, more your yeah, thing. Rem I'm sorry, what? America had. It's what? I was gonna say that's more I like it. But that's more your goal than theirs. What's their goal? If they're hiring you, what do they want? What what is their final outcome? You know, it's like that's kind of where you know if, if you're gonna go that way. Because it's to me, like now I'm thinking about like I like it, but but that's your goal for your career, right? Mm -hmm. that, okay, that's a good that's a good perspective to have now. And I would yeah. ever like, so slightly might get thrown me in jail, but not quite. What? I want something. I want a, something that <laughs> that'll get you thrown in jail, but not quite. Not quite. Just enough to like make the verse going. What? <laughs> just that double entendre. What did she just have on there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, we can. That could be the doomy one, though. <laughs> oh can you guys hang on a sec i i i'm probably gonna hang on hang on he's talking <sighs> traveling together or something taking the path together something yeah. like that yeah i'm liking the paths and the trails and and like do that. we have to have do we have to have like a uh, like a tagline like that do we have to have something? no that's what she was saying it doesn't it you could take it off there and it'd be just fine with okay because i don't have anything i couldn't come up with anything that wasn't too cheesy i mean right. you know and and that's the thing is like worst case scenario is i'm just not gonna have anything yeah um, but because she said you, you don't need it you don't need it yeah and that's you know it's fine i don't need it I'm okay without it. Oh. But have you have you been working on yours though? Jim? Have I been? Yes. Let me show you. Uh oh. Right on. Can you see that? Hey. Ashburn. I like it. It's I like it. Very, very simple. I like something um just real. I wanted something that reminded me of something like Hollywood 1940s, you know? Yeah, so yeah, I thought, yeah. well, just something I was going to say, I like the script in it. Yeah, just something simple. Do you really like it? You like it? Yeah. I mean, it looks like a neon sign. I uh, fiddled around with different colors, and I just thought the black and white was the best. Yeah. Do I see it again? I did that on Canva. Oh. Of course, it's showing it backwards. Sorry. No, it's right. Ashbrook voice acting. Nice. Yeah, I like the I like the the font on there. The and see simple yet elegant. Al, that was one of the things where I was wanting to do like something around the, but I don't think it needs it. Okay, well, if you want to try it later, uh, I'll show you how to do it. 
Okay. But Canva, I love Canva. I had a paid subscription there for a while and thought, well, I don't necessarily need it because I'm not going to do be doing them all all the time, you know. Yeah. But it is kind of cool to deal to you know, fiddle around with. Yep. It's fun. It's fun to play with it. I'm luckily my niece is a designer, so she's gonna help me out with mine next week. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. So what would it oh sorry. I You're didn't have the volume up. I have no idea what you guys are we're talking about. <laughs> we're talking logos. Yeah, Jim showed oh, us cool. the logo that he he was putting together. Oh nice. All right. What are you thinking, Jim? Oh, right. You did. Say, I like it. You ever remember you sending that to me or something similar? I actually really like the simplicity of it. The black yeah. is really sharp. It, it reflects you. That's the thing is like, I do, I do think it matches you, you know? So it's, uh, it's got a cool kind of like, I don't know what the word is, but it's just a, it's got a nice, uh, I don't know, like gentlemanly, I guess. Yeah. I, don't know. I, I, I like that. I like the whole um, elegance of 1940s type thing. And yeah. I thought just something simple, you know, and I fiddled around with different colors and I thought, no, black and white, just plain old black and white. I like it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I remember you sending me a few, a few ideas somewhat a little while back, but um, all right. Yeah, I, think, I think this is my favorite out of all the ones that I fiddled around with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like it. It's uh, something that simple would definitely be able to, re, you know, like uh, you'd be able to do a lot of different things with it, you know, for sure. So different designs. And if you only there's, you know, you have there's, of course, I, I guess there's different levels of, of of black, but like there's only one white. And then, you know, like to be able to just, I don't know, like you can create a lot of stuff yourself is my point is like just mm -hmm. change, instead of having to choose the shades because like with Canva, like I have a certain let, like a certain shade of purple that I like to that I like to use, but at the same time I don't have an exact one. It's like some days it it shows up differently, but I like more of like a dark like a dark purple, like an eggplant kind of you know, um, than than like a lavender. I'm not a fan of like a lavender, you know. So like I go back and forth, but it's you know it's like about choosing the shade, and then the shade has like a certain code, right? But with black and white, it would be super simple for you to just do that in a bunch of different, especially if you're with, yeah, if you're using Canva, then, you know, be able to, you know, do a lot of different stuff with it. So cool. All right. Well, um, I am off to, that was my beau. He is work. Oh. looks like we're going for sushi. So I'm very excited. Ah, now. <laughs> nice. We haven't done that in a while, actually. And I don't know if we're going to wind up waiting in line. I have a feeling we're going to wind up waiting for a while because there's not a whole lot of great sushi places here. And so they, the. You're on the ocean. No, I'm not. Isn't Jersey near the ocean? I'm closer <laughs> to Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. It is, but like, <laughs> it's not my area. No, I'm not near the ocean, but. <laughs> If you were to, if you look at the George Washington, I mean, the closest ocean is New York City. <laughs> you don't want to really. Uh, but I mean, if you go about like the closest the point is probably about an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes. So I'm, you know, but if you go, if you look at where the George Washington Bridge is, I should say here, and just work your way west that's where, that's where I am. So I'm like, you know, yeah, it's, a, it's a bit of a hike to anything. I mean, we, we have lakes here, but yeah, no. Um, but yeah, so the, so the sushi places, there's just not a whole lot of, you know, it's, uh, it's gotten a lot better. There's definitely a lot more options in the last several years. Like we have a Jamaican restaurant right in town. That's like incredible. Um, but like not a whole lot of, options like you know so like not a ton of sushi places so the ones that do make it that do well are always packed you yeah. know so anyway how, how hard is it to get into new york to city new york city um on i mean 
what do you mean how hard it, like you mean on like a Friday night, like if I were to leave now, it would probably take me two hours to drive in there if we were to drive, but I could hop on a train yeah, and be in, in an hour and 15, right. You know, maybe 75 sometimes, or yeah, I guess that's 75 minutes, an hour and 15. Um, sometimes it's as much as two hours just to get on a train to go just because of the stops and stuff, but it depends on if the, it's, if it's the express train or not, but you know, so, but yeah, I'm only 15 minutes from like the end of one of the lines. Like I'm actually right around the corner from a train station, but you have to take a transfer to get yeah. here all the way at further out West. But if yeah. I could, I'm only 15 minutes away from the very last stop on the line that goes straight into New York city that stops in Penn station. So if our, and, and that's about a 75 minute that on the express it's 75 minutes, cool. um, but it's an hour and 40 on like a regular day or regular, like outside of peak times. Cause that's for travelers for, um, commuters yeah. but yeah it's not too bad I mean the the least amount of time it's ever taken me is 52 minutes and that's like one o'clock on a Tuesday like just <laughs> flew right in literally from leaving my parking lot to the pulling into the the parking garage that I had the reservation for to put my car 52 mm -hmm. minutes like into the through the Lincoln like boom, boom, boom. And I was like, oh my God, that's never going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> Got all the lights and everything, but you know, it's, but yeah, it's about an hour. It's, you know, it's really not bad. Like on a, on an okay day, it's about an hour's drive, you know, right. but then you got parking and all that stuff, but yeah, it's all really, right. so anyway, well, all right, guys, well, enjoy. Thank you, Isaac and Mayor and Al and oh, do we lose? Uh, yeah, no, Matt. Matt didn't stick around for long. I just realized yeah. that it was like early on he popped in, but um, but yeah. So um, you guys have a great weekend. Yeah, thanks. You too. You too. We'll, we'll talk mm -hmm. soon. All right. Reach out if you guys need me as always. All right. We'll do. Okay. Thanks for the okay. Stay in, safe. Guys. Enjoy sushi. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye.